A lot of us didn't actually get to see the legendary Bruce Lee when he was alive. But men, you would never doubt that his name left a permanent stamp on the martial arts world. Sadly, Bruce Lee was only 42 years old when he died, but he had not failed at the single act of showing the world what stuff and talents he was made of through his acting, philosophical talks, teachings, music, and of course, his fighting skills. Bruce Lee, interestingly, did not just show everyone that he was a great martial artist. Rather, in most cases, he left many thinking that he was superhuman. You might think that this is exaggerated, but what we are about to show you will leave you breathless. In case you didn't believe it, here are 10 undeniable pieces of evidence that Bruce Lee was indeed superhuman. Number 10. One Inch Punch Indeed, it isn't new that martial artists are always doing incredible things, from swiftly breaking slab without breaking a sweat to doing incredibly high jumps like they had wings. The thrill never ends. However, amongst the crowd of talented martial artists that existed in his time, no one compared to Bruce Lee and his famous one-inch punch. Great at leaving people wondering what just happened, Bruce Lee had a lot of surprising moves that had to be seriously analyzed by scientists to understand. This was precisely where his one-inch punch fell into. It was a thrilling move that involved Bruce Lee punching his victims from just one inch away. From that distance, you might hardly see Bruce Lee move his body. Still, we are telling you that you won't question the impact, which literally sends heavyweight men flying away. The one-inch punch introduced by Bruce Lee was so good that it literally found a place for itself in the martial arts world, even long after his death. As we speak, it is now trendy in our modern-day pop culture and was even featured in the hit classic cult film titled Kill Bill. This terrifying punch might only take a few milliseconds to do. Still, it would send the victim flying five meters away, and even incapacitated when done correctly. Interestingly, Bruce Lee did it correctly every single time. So, how exactly does this punch work? According to an expert researcher at Stanford University, the one-inch punch carries some strategies that make it retain a heavy impact. Here, it is said that the strength of the punch comes from the legs. By doing it, Bruce Lee would literally straighten his leg with a quick, vital knee extension. This sudden movement will then increase the speed of his hip, thereby moving his shoulder forward and thrusting his arms. Following this, his elbow will then be extended quickly with his fist forward, and shortly before his punch lands, he flicks his wrist, this generating the shocking impact we get to see. According to scientific analysis, Bruce Lee's one-inch punch is quite highly impactful because it combines the strength of the biggest muscles in the body and is therefore equivalent to the force of a car crash at 50 kilometers per hour. But when it comes to the magic of Bruce Lee's punches, there's more and it has become a well-known phenomenon that Bruce Lee can render a punch having a force of 350 pounds, which is the same as Muhammad Ali, who is way bigger than him, showing how extraordinary Bruce Lee is. Number 9. Caught Rice Grain with Chopsticks If you know martial arts, you will agree that it's not just about fighting or having immense strength. Rather, like having very strong and accurate reflexes in different situations, as you never know what might be happening next. Bruce Lee was well aware of this and did not hesitate to work on his instincts continuously. We still don't precisely know all that he did to garner a powerful instinct. However, we're sure that by the 1960s, he was already so good at this and had the weirdest way of showing it, it's hard to imagine, but Bruce Lee would literally, according to reports, catch a grain of rice with his chopsticks. How difficult is that? Take a moment and try it. The results will tell you that Bruce Lee is no average human being. And according to reports, he does not catch these grains by mistake. He is a master of the art, catching most of them when he throws them up, thus displaying his powerful reflexes, which are still celebrated long after his demise. Suppose you have ever come across the famous 1984 Karate Kid, where Mr. Miyagi trains Daniel to catch a fly using a chopstick. In that case, you've probably had a taste of Bruce Lee's influence on both the martial arts and movie industry, as none after him have been said to replicate this action. And for Bruce Lee himself, there's really no filmed evidence of him catching a grain of rice with his chopsticks. However, with the many other thrilling skills he's displayed in public, it isn't hard to believe that he can do this too. Number 8. A Threat to Punching Bags 
While having super strength is at different levels for superhumans, it's among the common attributes allotted to the pack. This is one reason why it's hard to not pay close attention to Bruce Lee when considering the possibility of having real-life superheroes. Indeed, Bruce Lee was a lot stronger than most when he was alive, and taking into account his stature only makes things more intriguing. Despite his small stature, it soon became known from his intense training videos just how much strength Bruce Lee commands. It only left many mouths agape every single time. In most expert training settings, we're used to seeing well-built martial artists landing good punches at a punching bag. However, this happens in a relatively gentle way as they try to maintain balance and stamina. But that's not what you experience when watching Bruce Lee training with the punching bag. Instead, prepare to be amazed as Bruce would definitely tear through these punching bags every single time at an alarming speed. On one occasion, he even broke a punching bag that weighed about 45 kilograms using the super sidekick, which left all amazed. Interestingly, this soon became a regular occurrence, to the point that he had to start using a unique punching bag. While typical martial artists make use of traditional punching bags, which weigh about 50 kilograms, Bruce Lee could only train with one weighing about 135 kilograms and still tore through them. This was indeed all the reminder needed by those big thinkers to help them understand that they really wouldn't survive a punch from the extraordinary Bruce Lee. Number 7. Too Fast to be Filmed by now, you would quickly nod in affirmation when we say that Bruce Lee is simply one actor who was too good for his times, and even generations after him. But here's the kicker. We still need to finish showing you evidence. So what else have we got? Because he started early, Bruce Lee could boast of accomplishing so much at a young age, especially since he spent most of his time training. So by the time he began to be sought by Hollywood, he was already well known all around the globe, and he was incredible. Hence, it was beyond doubt that Hollywood wanted him. Yet, a shocking twist arose. Bruce Lee, at this point, soon started finding it hard to enter the industry. Why? Because he was just too fast for the industry and the technological tools available to them at the time. In the 1960s, when Bruce Lee joined the industry, technology was still relatively poor and developing, and more work was needed. Bruce Lee's speed soon became a problem and caused real-time issues during filming. For example, in the 1966 Season 1 of the Green Hornet TV series, Bruce Lee's appearance was iconic. However, filmmakers have complained about the numerous challenges involved in filming Bruce Lee's moves. According to them, they couldn't capture Bruce Lee's real-time moves as it was too fast for the camera at the time. This is because, while cameras today can shoot up to 240 frames per second, older cameras could hardly shoot about 24 frames per second showing how much Bruce Lee had to struggle. Thus, his fight scenes barely could have shown better on camera as his speed was outrageous. On a regular basis, Bruce Lee can deliver up to nine punches and six kicks in a second, which was too fast for the camera. Talking about their experience, the Green Hornet producer described the typical result as being that during fight scenes. Bruce Lee would look motionless. At the same time, his opponents fell to the ground around him. Because of this, they literally had to ask him to slow down on his supersonic speed so the camera could follow him. Number 6. Exercise Regular For someone as skillful as Bruce Lee, it would likely not surprise anyone to hear that he endured an excruciatingly strict, disciplined life. For one, while he also took other training that was seemingly impossible, his disciplined life also included a series of regular exercises, which are quite a norm for anyone who wanted to do well in the field of martial arts. Exercise, as we know, has a couple highly impactful benefits on the body. For fighters, it's much needed to develop strength, perseverance, and stamina, which are required for combat. Now, some of the most common exercises in this category are push-ups and pull-ups, which can be done by anyone without the help of any tool. But here's the exciting part of doing push-ups and pull-ups. There are different thresholds for different individuals. Some people even do push-ups with a threshold as small as 10. Now, let's not focus on those with little thresholds. Instead, take your minds to experts who seemingly do a high number of push-ups. For them, what do you think? Bruce Lee is capable of doubling whatever number of push-ups they have to offer. It is proven through many tests and challenges that man is indeed no ordinary human being, judging from the high number of push-ups he can give. For example, there was a time when he did a push-up challenge using just one of his hands. And if that wasn't enough, he didn't even use all of his fingers for the job. 
but utilized just his thumb and index finger. In the end, he was able to do about 200 push-ups, which is impossible for a normal human being. But Bruce Lee did not stop there. In a different challenge, he wowed the world when he offered to do push-ups with just his two thumbs and ended up doing over 100 push-ups. If this is the case, you might be wondering what his threshold is for a regular push-up. Well, don't be so stunned, but Bruce had done about 1,500 of these during one challenge, leaving many wondering who the hell he was. Number 5. Dragon Flag Keeping fit might be very important to most people. However, speaking to experts will only make you understand that it is a non-negotiable necessity for martial artists. On his part, Bruce Lee was a very focused individual, so he knew what his purpose was in life and that his calling was towards being a martial artist. Because of this, maintaining fitness was a primary goal as well. So he literally spent the most part of his life training and maintaining fitness. Testifying to this, the words of Bruce's wife show how serious Bruce had been at the time that he spent both his free and not-so-free periods exercising. However, his exercises were unique and that he focused a lot on developing the core areas around his stomach and torso. He knew that the abs were needed for almost every tactic and move in martial arts. Hence, he intentionally trained them to be in good shape. But even in this, Bruce was not going to do any random abs workout. Instead, he coined his very own abs workout, which is famously known as the Dragon Flag. For those who don't know, the Dragon Flag is a phenomenal workout that is not meant for the faint of heart. Knowing that Bruce Lee is involved could give you a hint at how rigorous it would be. Let's describe the workout to see if it's meant for you. To do the Dragon Flag, you would have to lie on the bench and then leave your whole body on the bench, leaving just your shoulder on the surface. You would have to hold this position for quite a while, lowering and raising your body back at intervals, just like Bruce Lee did. There's no doubt that describing this exercise can be way more accessible. It's a workout for superhumans. And if you have no clue, seeing Bruce Lee in action while carrying out this exercise will tell you that it is no joke. That said, you honestly only want to try this at home if you are strengthened by the gods or an expert in the field. We must also note that Bruce Lee's creation of the Dragon Flag has had significant impact on the martial arts world. Here, it has become a famous exercise and an exciting part of a different martial arts training routine. However, there's no telling of what kind of person you would have to be to do them. Number 4. Dislocated Shoulder with a Slap even if you never had a chance to see Bruce Lee when he was alive, pictures and films show just how small he was in stature. Taking a first glance at him, you would probably think he was a pushover, but sadly, Bruce's small frame lied to us all. The strength that came from that small body of his wasn't one to mess with. However, only a few people learned this on time. Awareness was already coming to us pertaining to his strength in the 1960s, when he started becoming a famous martial artist. Still, more than this, fame and name were needed to deter people from the very start, though they had some level of awareness that he was pretty intense and required special equipment to train. Some people who honestly shouldn't envy him were still bold enough to attempt sparring with him. The question is, why? Do they love to be beaten up that much? Well, we'll never know. In the meantime, let's tell you a thrilling story of one of the not-so-fortunate people who sparred with Bruce Lee. According to reports, it only took one slap from Bruce Lee to dislocate someone's entire arm in training. Of course, there were many reasons why no one expected it. First, Bruce was not just fighting with anyone, but a fellow well-trained expert who was thought fit to withstand Bruce Lee. Second, it was just a slap that did the dislocation of the whole shoulder. Even Bruce Lee himself was confused by this event when asked afterward, knowing that he didn't strike the victim. Now, we're familiar with stories like this coming from superhero movies, but the fact that this is Bruce Lee's story makes things even more baffling. Number 3. Lightning Fast Magic we already know that Bruce Lee is a brilliant fighter. However, only a few people know about the playful side of him, which still portrays his superhuman nature. Bruce Lee is quite aware of the thrilling feeling that comes with playing magic tricks, so he doesn't fail to leave a mark on that area of life as well. But how does he do this? Here, you'll need a little knowledge of magical tricks. And if you recall the trick where magicians pull a coin from the back of someone's hair, then that's a good start. While he was alive, Bruce Lee was very fond of making use of this magical trick, but with a little tweak. He displayed how much of a superhuman he was. So imagine, you were actually the one having this magic time with Bruce Lee. 
For his own trick, Bruce Lee will literally place a coin in your palms and ask you to stretch it out open. You did not have to do anything else apart from closing your hands quickly when you noticed Bruce Lee trying to make any form of movement. However, it will amaze you to know that before you can close your hand, Bruce Lee will be able to snatch the coin from your palms like a real-life human flash. This wasn't a joke, as no one recorded in history has been able to stop Bruce Lee from getting the coin from their palms. However, Bruce Lee doesn't stop there. He does the extra by not only taking the coin out of his victim's palms, but also switching it for another. This displays the unbelievable. The question is, just how fast is the man? He's fast enough to be called a superhuman, isn't he? Number 2. They Couldn't Defeat Him Come on, it is customary to expect some level of shock, pain, or even defeat when you're fighting with a well-trained martial artist. But it's a whole new ball game when the martial artist which you're dealing with is Bruce Lee. While there's so much that Bruce Lee can do with a punch, including the one from one inch away, it will amaze you to know that there's very little that other fighters can do with their punches when standing against Bruce Lee. From our perspective, the legend's star as a great fighter is literally open for everyone to see. However, some people still needed to learn early to avoid messing with him. While Bruce Lee's unparalleled skills were already evident in the 1960s, some still couldn't accept that he was the greatest and would instead challenge street fights. They obviously needed more convincing on the fact that the legend was way out of their league. And while Bruce mostly turned them down in order to protect them from what lay ahead, there were those times when he was obliged to send home a message. Now, don't imagine yourself to be any of these opponents because the results were not so good. An excellent example of one of these times happened with a karate master, Yoichi Takashi. According to Jesse Glover, an American martial artist also known as Bruce Lee's first student, Yoichi and Bruce were rivals. Their rivalry had begun at the Edison's demonstration. Bruce stated that the soft style of Kung Fu worked better than the rugged style. This statement stirred up something in Master Yoichi, who began to make offers to duel with Bruce. After a series of declines, Bruce Lee finally accepted, and the game started. The fight was to happen at the YMCA, with only seven people present. The rules were that there would be three rounds, each lasting two minutes. Here, the first to be knocked out would lose. You would wonder what happened next, but intriguingly, this fight only lasted 11 seconds, with Master Yoichi not even able to give Lee a single punch. On the other hand, Bruce Lee sent him numerous straight punches, which left him defenseless, before giving him a double punch on the head, ending the fight. Another time, on the set of Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee was challenged to a battle, and surprisingly, he also accepted it. Again, what unfolded afterward looked unreal, with Bruce Lee dodging every blow of the opponents like they were nothing. After wowing the crowd, he finally locked the weary opponent in submission against the wall. And if that wasn't enough, he still had the energy to give a class on combat afterward. Looking at this, it's clear why Bruce Lee remains a legend even long after his passing. Number 1. He sent a 135 kilogram punching bag flying. Now, there's so much that can be said when talking about the damage that Bruce Lee can do using his punches and fists, which you really don't want to experience. However, don't even try to imagine the immense chaos that can be delivered from his mighty kicks. According to reports, using just one of his powerful kicks, he was able to send a 135 kilogram punching bag flying five meters into the air. To know how strong this is, think of the height of a regular bungalow. Knowing this, can you imagine Bruce Lee actually kicking people? It's hard to believe, but there are a few examples. There's something Bruce Lee usually did that was both hilarious and terrifying while he was alive. It involves carrying his training shield around, just in case he has to test his legs on anyone. So this is how it works. Whenever Bruce Lee finds a willing and perfect match for his tests, he usually gives them his training shield to put on kicking them afterward. The result is the unbelievable sight of people actually flying away without any film trick. How amazing, right? We've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching till the end. Do you agree that Bruce was superhuman? Do well to share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to like it, share it, and subscribe for more of its kind.